Time to get started. Hello and welcome to our webinar to what's new in ArangoDB 3.6. Um, some general remarks. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and uh, you will get a recording and link to the slides uh, to your inbox in a couple of days. Um, if you have questions, please ask in the chat and I might uh, get back to them during the presentation or uh, right afterwards in the Q&A. Um, but if you have also questions afterwards, you can also ping me on uh, Slack in the community channel and ask your questions there. Okay, yeah. I'm very excited to have the opportunity to introduce you to the uh, what's new in Arango DB 3.6. Uh, my name is Ingo Friedgartner. I'm product manager here at Arango DB. So, and <clears throat> first of all, uh, the 3.6 release uh, was just published uh, a week ago. So, uh, in the beginning of January, we started the new year with uh, 3.6, the new release. And we are grateful that uh, we could um, grow our community in the last year uh, a lot. Uh, now with uh, 9,000 uh, stargazers on GitHub. So this project is uh, um, really uh, important and a lot of people like it. Um, at the end of last year, we managed uh, to launch our new uh, service Oasis. So um, a managed cloud offering for RangoDB. And uh, I guess uh, some of you have already um, yeah, participated in our webinar for the Arango ML, the machine la learning uh, tool set that we also introduced uh, last year. And all these projects are growing and we are super, uh, super excited what 2020 will bring us. So today, I want to uh, go through the main features of uh, ArangoDB 3.6. Um, in a nutshell, we have uh, a one-shot deployment. This is um, a new enterprise feature. I will come to it a little bit uh, later. And um, the main improvements in this 3.6 release are um, performance improvements. So this was um, our main focus uh, for 3.6 that we uh, can improve the performance of uh, a lot of AQL queries um, so that everyone uh, that uses ArangoDB in a, a single server or in a cluster and the community edition, they uh, can benefit from um, great improvements in uh, several uh, areas of AQL. Um, and of course, uh, around the search, um, the search engine that we added uh, with 3.4 um, will um, continuously um, um, we added uh, new features there. And uh, in this 3.6 release, we uh, could add uh, edge engram and uh, a lot of area, um, area support. Um, then I will briefly uh, show you Oasis Managed Service. So what we changed in uh, 3.6 is also available in our Managed Service. And uh, of course, we have uh, a lot of new features, but uh, also something uh, we need to deprecate now with 3.6. And these are uh, the MM files um, storage engine, so memory mapped files um, that was our first storage engine from the beginning and uh, nowadays a lot of customers are uh, switching from mm files to RocksDB engine um, so they have uh, less restrictions um, like uh, collection write logs and uh, improved uh, startup times and uh, also lately some of uh, uh, some of the cool features we released in 3.5 like the hot backup feature is also something that's not, not available for the MM file storage engine because it's uh, mostly memory. 
Um, there will be a separate blog post uh, that addresses the transition um, from NM files to RoxyB. And um, uh, yeah, you can uh, have a look there how you merge to RoxyB. So um, let's dive into the new features with one shot. Um, in fact, a lot of customers asked us uh, to provide this uh, functionality. And uh, now they can get their hands on uh, one shot with around VV 3.6. Um, so one shot is a new um, deployment type. Um, actually, uh, one shot is uh, a database option. Um, and one shot is an optimization uh, just for a set of collections uh, that get created together. So um, I think it's was not easy to find a name for it. And uh, um, but in the core, it's this single shot, which is the key uh, for this feature. So I explain it in all in detail as now. So um, one shot optimization is um, something like an uh, optimizer rule that we um, imp integrated in 3.6. Um, and this checks if the collections that are used in a, uh, special, uh, in a specific AQL query um, are all on the same database server and have just one shot, just a single shot. Um, and if this is the case, then this optimizer rule uh, comes into place and the execution of this query uh, can be uh, done on the DB server. So uh, one shot uh, is something that uh, provides you a single server-like read performance uh, and also gives you the uh, fault tolerance of a cluster setup. Uh, with synchronous replication and um, auto leader change in case of failure. And of course, uh, as well, you have uh, multi collection transactions on leader shards um, with tunable guarantees. So, just uh, to recap, um, I have uh, here a visualization of a of a cluster, a three node cluster. Um, to simplify it a bit, it's just one coordinator and I just give the, the agency here. So I have a cluster with three nodes, three DB servers, um, and um, of course in the background are agents and coordinators. And um, if we create a database for a service, service A, then uh, this database will be created on all um, database server nodes, so service A is now a database on, on each node. And then I'm able to add collections. So I added several collections here, A, B, C with different numbers of shards. So uh, A with three shards, B with uh, just one, and uh, so something like a, maybe a category uh, collection with just a few hundred records. Uh, I don't uh, need to shard that. It's all uh, your choice. So this is the current behavior uh, in our um, database. Now we add these, um, oh, sorry, one, I missed the replication factor, of course. Um, the resilience I just get if I replicate all my shards in the cluster. And uh, so here I have a lot of grayed out replica boxes in the diagram. And uh, now every shard is also replicated twice. So now adding a second database to this cluster. So the second database, I now want to configure as a one shot database. So I um, just uh, state that in the, uh, the create statement of the database, said service B, the database has just one shard and a default uh, replication factor of three. Um, this also means that uh, when I add these collections, D, E, F, and G, um, and uh, replicate them, then all leader shards are on just one node. And they are synchronously replicated. If I now get a request to, this, uh, to the coordinator um, with service B, then uh, I 
the coordinator will examine the query if uh, all collections that are involved e and e are on the same um, db server then the coordinator just um, applies the optimizer rule and the execution um, just uh, is local uh, on the db server node 2. the coordinator just handles the result over to the client and then it's done so no hop from one uh, database server to another. So, and of course, in case of a failure, uh, the normal cluster procedure starts. So, manual leader change, uh, no, sorry, um, the agency de detects the, the node failure, the leader election uh, um, takes place, and we switch to uh, another database server. So, here, node one, uh, this database server takes over and is a new leader. So you don't have to do something here. Um, if you want to do a, a manual leader change, you can also do that. So uh, if you want to switch it now to, the, uh, to another node, you can also do that. Uh, there is one system collection, it's a graph collection. This is the, the leader collection. And if you move this to another DB server, uh, all the rest will also be moved. So, what are the use cases for one-shot database setup? Um, so, such a setup allows you to deploy highly performant graph use cases. This is uh, one use case. So you don't have to hop uh, from, from one DB server to another when you uh, do a traversal. So, this is uh, one use case. And uh, also, it's uh, multi-tenant setups. There, you can have dedicated databases for each customer, and you can uh, scale the application uh, just by adding new nodes. I will come to the a bit later. Um, yeah, limitation: uh, all the data needs to fit on one machine. Uh, that's the case uh, if you use uh, these one chart for a complete database. But uh, we will see later that uh, we can also do that on individual collections. So one shot as a deployment mode. Um, this is uh, a possibility to uh, use uh, startup parameters um, to enforce one shot for a complete cluster deployment. Um, this means uh, all databases that you create on this uh, cluster will be one shot. They have uh, um, a replication factor or default, but you uh, can state you can leave that open. You can change that uh, then uh, for each database. Uh, but here um, you force the one shot setup. Um, this is a possible sub uh, substitute for the active failure deployments. And uh, here you uh, get this. Uh, cluster mechanics, so the deployment and uh, management tools, monitoring, all that stuff is uh, the same as in the shared cluster. And um, you have this uh, synchronous application, everything is, is, uh, is there. Um, and not, of course you have uh, other use cases. Um, where you just want uh, to have a single collection, uh, not a single collection, but a group of collections that have these uh, one shot characteristics. Um, if you want to do that, uh, you can create a um, collection and with the number of shards one and a replication factor of two or three, whatever you, you need. And um, all the additional collections that were um, yeah, we're joined with this user role collection. Um, they, if you create them, they you just state distribute charts like and state the uh, collection user role, so the leading um, collection. And uh, if this value is set, um, all the attributes uh, like replication factor, number of shards, and charting strategy uh, will be uh, used from the, from the other collection. 
and uh, now these uh, collections are uh, can can use these one shot uh, optimization which is uh, also um, an optimizer rule for aql trees cluster one shot so here you see uh, how that looks like if you uh, look on the properties of the permission collection now it has a replication factor of three and it's distribute charts like usable. Use case uh, for um, such a setup that uh, is maybe a mixed one shot with a sharded collection setup uh, could be something like sharded IoT data, so lots of IoT data, uh, but you have also some metadata collections that are frequently joined together and uh, then you can. Uh, benefit from these uh, one shot optimization this will be uh, executed locally on one uh, database server and if you combine this with an iot collection which is not part of this uh, of this uh, group uh, then it's uh, just goes the normal uh, cluster array so more boxes this is uh, a visualization of the multi-tenant setup um, so here you have uh, dedicated uh, databases uh, per client. So here you see customer A, customer E, customer D. And um, all these databases are one-shot databases. But um, of course, you can scale your application uh, by adding more nodes and uh, distribute the load uh, in the cluster. So here. You can just uh, add uh, one more customer and uh, so then it's maybe filled, uh, maybe not. And uh, then you add, add more nodes. And as you see, node six, uh, currently no customer or no active um, one shot there. So there is uh, a resource uh, that could be used. Probably from node five, we can switch one customer uh, to node six. So this was the one shot feature. And um, this one shot feature is also uh, av is available in the enterprise edition and is um, also uh, available in the managed service RongoDB Oasis. And um, I don't know if you have had the chance to have a look at this uh, feature, RongoDB Oasis. You can do a test, uh, test ride. 14 days for free, you don't need a credit card. And I just uh, log into my, um, my Oasis dashboard. So it just uh, has my session, so I don't have to type in my password. Um, and uh, what you can see here in this, uh, in this overview, um, I have a free to try account uh, there. And now I've also added a project and here I have the possibility to add a new deployments. With 3.6, if I add a new deployment, um, and uh, this is for service A, um, I can uh, choose a, a provider, Amazon Web Services or Google, and uh, Azure will be, will be uh, there uh, soon, so it's already in the testing. Uh, I can pick a region. We already added uh, one more region uh, lately. And of course, now you have the choice to uh, run your one chart cluster with the uh, version 3.6 of the database. I choose a certificate and then I have the chance to just do my free try. And um, yeah, I can just do that. I accept the terms and condition. Um, no, I don't. Uh, actually, I want to show you the pricing. No, I'll show you pricing later. So, first of all, create a, create a cluster. So the cluster is bootstrapping and uh, you will get noticed by email when it's uh, ready. And you can also have a look at the uh, servers and in a few seconds, um, they will spin up and yeah, get created. So it's a no-brainer to start with a RangoDB um, 
for free for 14 days. Um, yeah, just log in to cloudarongodb.com and start your own cluster. So I leave that uh, now bootstrapping servers. Um, not here. And uh, just show you the pricing. Uh, we could also lower the prices at the beginning of this year. So if you uh, are locked in, then you can have a look. Uh, we added a low CPU variant, so that is even uh, cheaper to get started. So uh, a four node size cluster. So this means three nodes of four gigabytes of RAM, 10 gigabytes of disk, uh, then you can start with 23 um, cents per hour and that's that's your starting point so feel free to try it out so um yes 14 days free trial um you have one shot and shadow clusters so everything is available here you have this attra attractive pricing now with uh, starting at 20 one cents per hour, and we have added the low CPU variant. Um, and uh, later this month, uh, I hope we can uh, start the beta testing of uh, Azure, and uh, then it will be available uh, later in, I think, in, in February for the public. So, um, next. The main thing of these uh, release, cluster performance. Uh, performance improvements, uh, not only cluster, also um, a single server. So um, I want to walk, walk you through uh, some of these uh, new features. And uh, I also already get uh, a complaint from my colleague that, I'm, uh, that I have too detailed uh, slides. So this will be a bit technical, but I think it's uh, worth to uh, have a deeper look at it. So um, performance improvements, um, early pruning of non-matching documents, subquery optimization, parallel AQL, late document materialization, and uh, some uh, optimizations for updates and replaces. Um, I will just uh, uh, show you uh, each feature. So early pruning of uh, non-matching documents is um, but you can uh, apply the filter condition directly uh, with a full collection scan or also an index scan. And um, yeah, you can just skip every document that, is, uh, that doesn't match the filter. Um, I have created an events uh, collection to show you uh, the result. Um, so events, 150,000 documents, uh, I filter by event type, button pressed, and then do a, a group by message. Uh, this could be something like uh, button pressed, uh, message light on, light off, and uh, do a count. So the result is just, uh, yeah, two uh, counts uh, of, uh, of a message. So in 3.5, I do the full collection scan with these uh, 150,000 uh, documents and then uh, later apply the filter and the coordinator gets these 30,000 um, 30, results and yeah, uh, does the grouping and counting and returns to the client just the two messages on off with the corresponding counts. In 3.6 with early pruning, um, we do the filter just when we do the full scan or uh, if we have an index, the index scan. So we just look at these 30,000 uh, documents that match the filter condition. Of course, this runtime of this uh, numerate collection node is uh, a bit longer, uh, but then we have, uh, we can, we can uh, also do the, um, the grouping here on the DB server, uh, this is a one shot, so this is local, and we can just uh, provide these two results to the coordinator. Uh, same with a shadow cluster. Um, now I have these collection events with nine shards. 
Um, so the coordinator collects two results from each shard. So these are these 18 uh, results and then performs the final aggregation. So this aggregation part was not uh, in the query. That's um, uh, what the coordinator does when he um, gets all the data from the nine shards of the cluster. So next feature is subquery splicing. Um, so this optimization for subqueries, um, they, um, you can benefit if you have subqueries that just return a small result set. Um, here's an example of a left auto join, um, which can be inlined and uh, executed uh, in a much more performant way. Um, we have measured 30 times uh, performance improvements uh, in cluster setup with nested, um, nested subqueries. And uh, my colleagues uh, did a blog post making subqueries fast. Um, I recommend to have a deeper look. There is a performance comparison um, of uh, subqueries with splicing and without splicing in the cluster and also um, on a single server. Um, there are limitations. Uh, they can uh, not yet be used in uh, cases with uh, limits or collect with count into operations. Um, this is uh, uh, something that's not uh, possible right now, but we are working on it. And uh, this will be in the next release um, of our MVP. Parallel IQL. So, um, here, the database service can work fully parallel for different shards that are involved. So um, this is a query in our query profile of a 3.5 uh, execution of a uh, single query that's uh, it's a bit small uh, for E in events return E. So I uh, already I just go to the uh, 150,000 uh, documents and uh, return them. And this is done in 3.6 seconds here in this small cluster. And if I do that in uh, the same query in 3.6, then you see the runtime uh, remote node is 2.45 seconds. But you see there is uh, uh, an indication that here, the optimizer will parallelize uh, gather this uh, working. So the execution time um, overall is just 1.62 seconds. So because everything is, uh, runs in parallel, uh, we can save time, time here. So 30 to 40% improvements is something we, we saw. And yeah, please test it and uh, see what you can, you can reach with you your setups and your queries. So next is late document materialization. Um, this is a, yeah, a use case uh, when you have a combined um, index and all attributes are part of the index. Um, so uh, here it's the position index on foo, bar, and bust. And uh, you do a filter and a sort query, uh, which is uh, covered by the, by the index. And then you um, just limit the result to 100 documents. And now with the date document materialization, we just, um, yeah, just get these 100 documents from RocksDB and uh, all others are just ignored. And uh, this is also possible for uh, search views. So also here we have this late document materialization and we just get the um, relevant uh, documents. So um, for cluster query, um, there we have uh, simplified the execution plans for a simple update and replace queries. Um, so if um, an update, uh, modifies multiple documents and uh, does not use a limit, so this is a limitation, uh, then the 
cluster internal traffic uh, is uh, a lot reduced and we can greatly speed up these query execution times. So 40 to 50% improvements in, in the cluster case. So this is also a huge improvement. So this was performance. Um, but I guess I have, uh, there was one more feature and um, I think it's in the, it's in the end of the presentation if it's, if I come to the end, it's 30 minutes already. Our own research. So um, our own research improvements. Uh, we skip the, the overview. Um, text analyzers um, now use uh, Edge Engram. Uh, so they have Edge Engram support. Um, if you create a new analyzer, we provide a minimum, maximum uh, of uh, engrams. And um, optional, we also uh, um, preserve or, or original values, so the, the complete token. And um, um, if we do that, so um, just a short comparison of uh, edge engrams and uh, normal engrams. So an engram of two, uh, from, from minimum two and maximum five of home automation, there's a list of a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of things. Um, but for use cases uh, like auto completion, um, there you just want to preserve uh, the start of a word. And um, so this is uh, match engram is uh, efficient uh, for autocomplete searches and also keeps the index sizes uh, reasonable. Um, so no live demo. So here, three autocomplete slides. So um, I have to, um, a QL search query um, where I um, use uh, tokens and uh, I have the IMDB database in the background. Uh, now I uh, type in the first two letters and um, use an autocomplete um, and also return uh, the title of a, of a movie and the score. And with uh, just two letters, I get uh, a lot of different stuff. But I use for I, I search for uh, a Pope uh, movie. So next character is uh, much better. So now I have uh, less results, and I already see my favorite movie. And with the next character, I um, just have this one result. So this is uh, um, yeah. An, Autocomplete based on uh, on engrams on edge engrams, and um, with uh, the next release, we will also add uh, some fuzziness to this autocompletion. So this was edge engram um, functionality was added to the text analyzer. Uh, we have a special engram analyzer as well. And here we added uh, UTF-8 support and the possibility to add markers. Um, so markers uh, to, yeah, to just uh, state the beginning of, um, of a term and the end. So this would uh, allow us uh, to do searches like, uh, like this here, that I just use, uh, just search for categories that starting with new. So a lot of other improvements um, um, is array support in Arango search. So array support in token functions and phrase functions just to um, make it easier to, to um, create uh, such uh, more complex uh, uh, phrases and uh, searches. And also array, array comparison operators. So here you can uh, use, um, you have an, an Array on the left, and then use any, none, all, and um, greater than, and so on to, uh, yeah, as a search criteria. Mm. So, what else changed? A lot, but um, the main focus was on on, uh, on the performance. So, um, also performance <laughs> a little bit. AQL date functions. So this is a small improvement. 
um, if we pass um, dates as strings, um, this will be a, a lot faster up to factor of three. And uh, now we also enforce a valid date range um, if you work with date and time functions in, in AQL. So a string day time value um, starts with the year zero and ends with 9,999. And we have also the same for, for integers. Mm. Another uh, date function uh, was also added, and this is um, date round. Um, this is uh, useful to yeah to group by uh, by a time frame of uh, minutes of hours or something like that. So here's an example query. I go through the events that I uh, created earlier uh, for the demonstration. Then uh, filter for button press, and uh, for a specific time frame from the beginning of this year until now, and collect uh, everything or group it by five minute uh, time ranges. And I return this with uh, the counter. So I'm, yeah, a small improvement for the echo functions. Um, yeah, that's it already for what's new in 3.6. So the most important features, uh, there are many more. You can have a look in the manual. Uh, there's a what's new in 3.6 uh, document. There's something like uh, the support for TLS 1.3 or uh, a new metrics API um, to, to export monitoring data in, in the Prometheus uh, format and uh, a lot of other, other stuff. Um, yeah, I asked you to just do a test drive of our RongoDB 3.6, uh, just using Oasis. Uh, 14 days for free, no credit card required. You can just uh, click on this link. No, uh, not in the presentation, but uh, afterwards, cloud.arangodb.com and just um, spin up a, a cluster and have a look. Uh, by the way, um, I can just have a look. If the cluster is up and running. So, yeah, I'm back into uh, Arangu Oasis, the control plane. And here I see in my project a new deployment. This expires in 14 days because it's a free trial. And now I can view um, the database, uh, servers, everything is up and running uh, since 18 minutes and it's uh, on 3.6 and now i can just connect uh, with drivers uh, the drivers here's the list i can uh, just use this uh, code copy and paste and then i can connect um, to my cluster so please try it out please try backups uh, everything is uh, ready to use for 40 days and if you're convinced, you can just uh, continue using using your cluster or uh, upgrade to uh, a bigger uh, node size or you know, more volume, however you want. Mm. Okay. Yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs>